enzymes. It's like how you get it together, you sort of basic enzyme operating system. Mm -hmm. So I think I would say enzymes is one whole category you could go into. Mm -hmm. And in that space, right now, I'm just looking for something that, um, so actually, the first thing that I that I actually thought of was I work with this woman who does genes finishing. I don't know, we might have that. So, oh, like like denim. Like denim finishing. So apparently, when they make jeans, one of the big challenges is they need to they then oxidize it, and they use chemical oxidizers in a wash, and they don't like that that is a loose oxidation, and then they have to put it into the environment. They'd love it to be fixed somehow, but it's really hard to fix oxidizers um, in a place. But silk potentially could. You potentially could fix oxidizing en enzymes in a, in a silk, and then like lay those on top of the genes, and it would oxidize it somehow. Um, that's a very very specific kind of like thing. Um, I thought for me like the the firefly enzyme create reaction was pretty neat because it's a visual. You can see it. You can show it to people to show them the thing. So there's I think there's really really functional things or like the washing machine enzyme ones. There are so many enzymes in the world. Um, and, and this is what's cool is in, in biology, like, we, bio, you know, like life uses enzyme for everything. And there's really cool enzymes that are very specific to very specific things like it'll only eat this one type of sugar molecule with this right stru stru structure. Or, and we've never had that kind of specificity in our own materials, but with silk, we potentially could. We could borrow those enzymes en 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 from organisms, put them in the silk, and now we suddenly have this fixed material that has that property, which we've never really been able to do before. So for me, the enzyme thing is wide open, and it's almost like whatever in the It's mind-boggling as a biologist, because everything that you, all those enzymes are now open for using in a way that we didn't know how to do before. You get these from Enzyme R Us. So you go to Sigma Aldrich, <laughs> and you literally just, and they are Enzymes R Us, or wherever you go, and you just purchase those enzymes. And then add them in. That enzymes tend to be expensive. So you just use a little bit. How expensive is expensive? Um, I'm sure you could get ones that you could just get a little vial for like thousands of dollars. Or, so like the lightning, uh, the firefly uh, bug one, like, you could probably do an experiment for like 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. You could get like the tubes, the stuff that you need. Cheaper than cherry bomb. It's cheaper than cherry bomb. Ah, that's a good quote. Cool. Thank you. Are they just hard to make, I guess? Or hard to so this is where like you, you, you can get like genetic engineered ones, you can get ones that are synthetically produced, you can get ones that are harvested, right? So then you start opening up the question, like, how are, what's the sustainability behind that, and does that mitigate things? So I think any of these projects, and I'm happy to help anybody navigate enzyme stuff. If you're interested in it, or you have an idea, idea for something, I'm happy to help you figure out what a cost might be, where it is, how to make it move, move forward, stuff like that. But yeah, um, they range in price. So you don't think there's much of a literature for us to go to at all to kind of say, hey, this lab has been doing blah, blah, blah? There's one lab called, if you type in Silk Lab okay. online, Silk Lab Tufts, or Silk Lab TED Talk, there's one guy, Fiorenzo is his name, and he's great. He's um, Italian. He came out of this one lab called David Kaplan's lab. And David Ka Kaplan is the... Yeah, there's some uh, journal articles online. If you type in Kaplan David Silk or whatever, okay. you would get his journals. And, and um, the directions for doing all this stuff comes directly from him. And so I'm sort of ripping off of his recipes mm -hmm. that he's been doing for decades um, for lab stuff. Fiorenzo is now the current sort of leader of the Silk Lab and is a charismatic dude, and if you get a chance, his talk is, is pretty cool. Um, he talks about all this stuff and more that I, that I, uh, that I mentioned today. Um, but he is really into optics, and of course he's going down this path of like, we're going to get this into you know, these high-tech sort of things. Mm -hmm. um, and the, I think the departure that I'm interested in is in the craftification mm -hmm. of it. And, and so that <coughs> subject is not, no, unfortunately, there's not a lot of literature on it. Um, 
really just cracking the egg here. So cool. It's fun. What do you know about Cheryl Haye Hayashi? Nothing. What is Spider she doing? Oh. Biology professor who works on UCSF? Uh, I'm not sure, BNL.gov. Uh, I'm not sure where she's from. Cool. Speaking of, how does this compare to spider spilt silk? So there, um, this, so spider, it's a good question. So spider silk, um, there are lots of different kinds of spider silk. Um, this is one specific kind of silk, which is kind of nice, because from a processing standpoint, it's a little bit more consistent. Um, spiders actually use, I think, eight or ten different kinds of silk, mm -hmm. and they, the way that they weave, weave it together is they have these different glands, and they squeeze it, and then they have spinnerets that can do fancy things and squeeze the silk, and it comes out as a fiber. It's a liquid quick crystal that's in their body, and then through the squeezing and shearing process when it comes out is how it gets dehydrated and turns into a, a fiber. Um, and so there are companies that are and you'll see them all the time. There's, they do do this. They make basically, uh, they do get bacteria to produce fibroin, and then that gets into this big vat, and then they scoop that up and process that. And so that's effectively the same thing. Um, so there's a couple companies like Spiber. If you've ever, if you type in like Spiber Japan, and there's all these companies out there. There's oh, there's a really great one that just came out there. I think they're down in San Francisco. I forget their name. They just came out of like stealth mode like a couple weeks ago. Um, that, that and they're doing like a uh, synthetic silk uh, from a spider um, um, product uh, fiber. They're really focusing on just like making that fiber, making that fiber. Um, and so all of the attempts to do that so far have kind of failed, in the sense that you can't get a fiber that's as strong as silk is normally and it's expensive and hard to do and so why are you know just kind of the economics never work out um but people keep trying um and so i i'm not quite sure it the the fancy part comes with how do you process it once it's i think once you're if you already have silk as a fiber breaking it down to then make a new fiber doesn't make a lot of sense unless you're adding something really unique to it um and so I think people have been doing that direct route, like, hey, let's make a fiber out of this silk stuff, and sort of missing the opportunity to do other things. So, so we don't know at this point how how hard you can make how how hard you can make it, how durable you can make it, how long you can make it last. That's all. It's all open. People have figured out how to like make it dissolve. Mm -hmm. Short in like an hour or never, mm -hmm. they figured that out. Um, I don't know how they did that yet. I haven't read those pa those papers because I'm just trying to you know yeah. get it to make a cool sheet looking thing. Um, it it um uh, but like on the list of things. So is there internet here? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are we on rolling barn? No. Yeah. Is there a password? Um, number two, ABS, capital O, W, L, S. Two ABS owls with capital O. Oh, I've got to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody remember that? Uh, <laughs> by the way, Cheryl is from UC Riverside. <laughs> UC Davis? No, UC Riverside. UC Riverside. The spider uh, person. Yeah. My sister works at these so super sizes. This right. looks, almost looks fibrous in there still. Is, it, is there still fibers in here? That's that one still fibrous? has fibers because I didn't digest it long enough, okay. I don't think. I didn't boil it long enough. Or, and I probably didn't cut it small enough. I was trying bigger chunks. Mm -hmm. I was trying to be late. I was trying to see how fast I could do it. But in order to make other fibers out of it, let's say, do you, then what do you do? Do you extrude it? Can you make it like little hollow tubes and things like that if you wanted it so to So people have light? made, yeah, well they've done the, so we made the hollow tubes out of doing the, um, so what you well, can do is you, you get a piece of paper and you roll it up or you get a tube that you want and then you do the, um, the nanofiber yeah. wrapping. So people yeah. make those like, they make like stents, yeah. basically like custom stents 
out of the nano silk fi fiber by spinning it around this, this tube. And you pull the tube out, and now you yeah, have solid. silk. Yeah. Um, so they've definitely done that. They've made micro capsule spheres of it. They've done, you know, they're in the lab just having fun <laughs> doing these things. Um, <laughs> yes, so people have done that. Um, Seems like you might have a project in mind that you were like. No, I about. just think through clicking through little things. I don't know. Um, yeah, so I think I want to make a knife out of silk, just because I think it's weird, like that weird idea that you can make a knife out of silk, and just because um, I, I don't think people have, you know, just just making a lot of like um, adding those minerals and making like a squid beak kind of like really hard edge um, out of silk seems like a strange idea. And yet, biology says it's definitely possible, and that's what it does. I don't know. I don't know how, <laughs> how hard we could make it. I think it's a good challenge. So there are, yeah, and so there is a possibility of making it like a, a lot of self-sharpening teeth. Uh, they have one side that's a little bit softer than, than, than the other, and so when it wears, it always maintains an edge. And so you could potentially make like a knife that would be self sharpening if you could control that, which you could with silk, theoretically. That's my razor blade. Yeah. <laughs> Ten they, years they do that with steel. in the making. They do that with steel blades for certain industries. Do the they, soft they and the hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Self sharpening soft. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Did here in that one? So in my garage, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of stuff in the garage, but there's a little spot with a hot plate. So if we had a group that wanted to, okay. if we wanted to actually get our hands on this and maybe make some, um, would you be interested in working with us? Absolutely, be happy to. Right. I mean, I could bring the hot plate in. We could do a little session. We could cut off some stuff and go through the process. Okay. Um, it's not not too it's not too bad. And you're, you're saying it takes a few days to digest. It's a four-day so. process to go from cocoon to gel. Um, right now, I have enough supplies for probably like ten runs. But if people, you know, you can buy stuff. Yeah, it's not that much. Mm -hmm. Twenty bucks. So maybe if we get two sessions, you could get it started and set for four days, and then totally. Okay. Yeah, there's good stopping points. Like after you boil it, like that's the first. You're done then, and then you do like a dissolve and stuff. So yeah, it's it's not too bad. The the dialysis is the only thing that takes a long time because you put it into the bucket of water, and you can replace the water. In the, it's boring. You place it in an hour, replace it like four hours later, eight hours later the next day. Like you just you kind of babysit it. Um, okay. But that's the only part that's kind of it's not very exciting. It just sits there. And the molecules do things. Do you know what size? I could tell you. I found the package at home. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah, they've figured out based on the size of the silk molecule um, that they're trying to keep um, in there. Um, you just pick one smaller than that, and then that should work. Because the lithium bromide will dissolve as an ion, and so it'll just flow through. Um, so you probably want as big a pore as you can get without having the, the silk fly out. So could you use a commercial reverse osmosis uh, saltwater desalinization membrane? So I don't know. It depends. A lot of those are under pressure, right? Like 3,000 psi. So yeah. this would probably form silk right away. It would probably like solidify out. Um, so so you've got to be a little numbers. gentle with it. Like this is a gentle dilution process okay. um, as opposed to a forced process because the silk may start to order itself. Mm -hmm. Like that's one way to get it to go from the liquid crystal to a solid is to shear it, or to, like if you like whoosh, did that, it'll just whoosh, turn into like a solid. So, yeah, I think. To break it. Yeah, like it's hard and we can snap it. Yeah, so this, it goes from the liquid and then it just goes to the solid by getting the water out of the way of the protein. Yeah, so the pressure would probably just be like, could find a partner with somebody and you doubt to actually like test out some of this. I, I think that's a good idea. I, I know one I know one guy in the department of like design and materials, but if anybody knows anybody else and you're interested, um, let me know. I know one guy who we could probably talk to to figure that out.
good idea. Right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, you want some clippings? How do we make another mulberry tree? Oh, it's a good